Well, will this be the last month of an open and uncensored Internet as guaranteed by the U.S. government? Well, a lot of lawmakers are saying that's exactly what could happen if Obama gets his way and hands over American stewardship of the Internet at the end of this month. Now, it's, it appears that a lot of congressional leaders are actually against this plan. They say they want to re rescue the Internet. These are top Senate and House Republicans. They've all signaled that they're going to ensure U.S. oversight continues to protect the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, or ICANN, and its stakeholders. Uh, they sent a detailed letter late last week um, saying this irreversible decision could result in a less transparent and accountable Internet governance regime or provide an opportunity for an enhanced role for authoritarian nation states. And they focused on several fatal problems within Obama's plan. Uh, they talk about several countries being committed to ending ICANN's status as a U.S. legal entity. This would invalidate its legal protections. It might offer the opportunity for an authoritarian government to swoop in and say, we'll make you a legal entity of our company, our country, you know, just do our bidding. And also they talk about ICANN uh, being able to become an unregulated monopoly if it is not part of the uh, U.S. commerce. But what's really interesting is we have a lot of tech giants coming out and saying that it's imperative for the U.S. government to go ahead and hand over U.S. Uh, stewardship of the Internet. These are tech companies including Facebook, Google, Twitter. They're urging Congress to support this plan for the U.S. government to cede control of the Internet's techno technical management to the global community. They say it's long overdue. So the U.S. Commerce Department has primary oversight of the Internet's management. That's largely because it was invented in the United States. Uh, Republican lawmakers, of course, are trying to block this handover to global stakeholders. This includes businesses, tech experts, and public interest advocates. They say, of course, this could stifle online freedom. Um, now, this is something that they've been working on for several years. Uh, but, again, these tech giants are saying, it's imperative, Congress, you must do it. Uh, give this to the global community. It's kind of frightening because we've actually already seen how tech giants like Google and Apple have had to alter a lot of the services that they provide to their customers in authoritarian countries like China just so they can do business there. And, of course, we've seen how Facebook and Google are actually uh, rigging the elections here in real time based on switching the algorithms or deciding what could become a trending topic. So this is kind of scary that these tech giants are basically um, ushering in an ultimatum to the government saying this is imperative you've got to do this when we have no idea who is going to get control it's going to be these globalist stakeholders who really don't have the best interests of the united states at heart like they say they do because we see they're already openly and actively anti-First Amendment as it is right now. So we can kind of see the writing on the wall. And, you know, just another little story to let you know how important it is to protect your Internet. Here's a story coming out of Candom County, New Jersey, um, talking about an unsecured Wi-Fi connection could lead to a scary case of mistaken identity. Uh, investigators with the Camden County Prosecutor's Office said a man used his neighbor's open network to download and distribute thousands of images of child porn. And they actually bus into these people's home at 5.30 in the morning. They raided their home, uh, got them out of bed. They were seeking the person responsible for downloading and sharing tens of thousands of images of child pornography. Uh, they went into the cu couple's computer. They found nothing. But then they soon discovered that it was actually their open Wi-Fi network. It wasn't password protected. And so uh, Louis LaSalle used a wireless router to connect to his neighbor's unsecured Wi-Fi, downloaded and distributed more than 700 pornographic videos and 33,000 images found on his laptop. My goodness. And so they say a lot of um, older folks or, you know, younger people out there who are just trying to do their little socialist j duty by keeping their Internet open and free for everyone to use. Well, you are setting yourself up uh, to not only hackers, but to obviously be used in a big scam like this where this could take you down. Lord knows what could have happened if we had some trigger happy police officers raiding this family's home. Of course, most importantly, Make sure the password on your Wi-Fi network is something very difficult, not easily guessable or hackable. And, of course, there is some software out there that will track and monitor people who are um, getting onto your network in, in real time, who's putting in passwords, who's accessing it. So look out for yourself. Top Hillary search terms. Hillary Clinton seizure. Hillary Clinton dead. Hillary Clinton age. 
uh-oh, it looks like the conspiracy theories are catching on. No, this is in light of the fact that Hillary Clinton collapsed in front of multiple cameras on September 11th, and then it was reported that she was dead by a local ABC news outlet in New York. We begin with the breaking news about Hillary Clinton's death. Now, Hillary Clinton is trending on Google search terms even more than Donald Trump. That's the first time this has happened in this campaign cycle. So it took Hillary Clinton nearly dying to become more relevant in Google search terms than Donald Trump. Of course, the cover-up and the spin is beginning. And I could, uh, you know, feel how hot and humid it was. I felt overheated. I decided that I did need to leave. And as soon as I got into the air-conditioned van, I cooled off, I got some water, and very quickly, uh, I felt better. She was even better last night before she went to sleep. She had a good night's sleep. She's doing fine. I, uh, she just got dehydrated yesterday. The cult of Hillary was called in to answer for their privatized investigation into the Clinton email server debacle. Facing the Oversight and Government Reform Committee, spokespersons for the DOJ, the State Department, the FBI, the Department of National Intelligence, the CIA, the Geospatial Intelligence Agency, and the NSA faced a frustrated Congress that had been given the cold shoulder when it came to the sharing of key details of Hillary Clinton's endangerment of U.S. national National security. And for some of you, I had to threaten to send a subpoena just to get you to appear today. We did some, uh, did some math. We got 70 of you sitting here. Between your compensation and your benefits package, you make more than a million dollars from taxpayers. Taxpayers are paying you seven more than a million dollars. And you won't even come talk to Congress. What do you do all day if you don't talk to Congress? What is it that you believe we don't have the right to see? See, this is the way our, our government works. We get to do oversight. That's why since 1814, this committee has been doing that. There's executive privilege. Let me help you. There's executive privilege. Has the president invoked executive privilege in this case? No. The answer is no. Good. That's right. The answer is no. Is there any other situation? Look, when it comes to classified information and the classification that, that deals in the executive order, you know, not all the information that we have in our files belongs to us. We defer to other agencies when it comes to access to their classified information. But you are the ones that put redactions on personal identifiable information, correct? We did on the personal identifiable information, that's correct. Where in the Constitution does it say that I can't see that? It doesn't address it specifically in the Constitution. Here, here's the problem. You handpicked the 302s to give to us, but the reality is... You should give us all the 302s. So let me say this. I think that uh, I think the director made principal decisions about what to say to Congress when he was here and also what to provide to Congress. As far as the... the Wait, where do I find the, that? Personally, I Do we just let everybody in government decide that they're based on their own individual principles? That's what... Con See, it's trust but verify is how it works. You don't get to decide what I get to see. I get to see it all. Will the FBI provide to Congress the full file with no redactions of personal identifiable information? I cannot make that commitment sitting here today. Then I'm going to issue a subpoena, and I'm going to do it right now. So let's go. I've signed this subpoena. We want all the 302s, and we would like the full file. You can accept service on behalf of the FBI? Certainly. You are hereby served. You understand why Congress might want to know whether or not the attorney-client privilege was waived and who the client was? I can, I can certainly imagine. Yeah, me too. That's why we want to see the file, agent. I mean, you say it's unprecedented. Mr. Cummings used to be a criminal defense attorney. He got to see all your 302s. Ken Buck used to be an assistant United States attorney. He got to see all your 302s. Probation officers get to see all your 302s. Why can't Congress? So I think we've given you the, the, the relevant ones as we... If we uh, relevant it. according to whom? I am telling you, I don't think you've given me all the relevant 302s. Well, the, rema the remainder of the 302s will come out through the FOIA process. I, but, 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 
But since when did Congress have to go through FOIA? These mouthpieces betrayed the American people in full daylight, representing a decades-old shadow government that answers to a well-established network of global multinational corporations that view Congress and the American Constitution as meaningless, and that hubris is strong, as global government has just a few more building blocks to set before we are all under a legalized one-world government. Teddy Roosevelt once said, Behind the ostensible government sits enthroned an invisible government owing no allegiance and acknowledging no responsibility to the people. Well, John Kerry's State Department is learning from its predecessor. Now there is an exclusive report coming out of the Daily Caller. John Kerry's State Department funneled millions to his daughter's nonprofit. Oh, but it's just a charity. How could that be bad? More than $9 million of Department of State money was funneled through the Peace Corps to a nonprofit foundation started and run by Secretary of State John Kerry's daughter. And uh, one of the big things here is that the Peace Corps awarded the money without competition to a nonprofit that Kerry created for the program. That's what you can't do. You can't do that. You have to allow people to bid on these contracts. So the Peace Corps uh, worked with Kerry's group called the Seed Global Health. It was a three-year contract worth $2 million of State Department money. This happened in 2012. Her father was then the chairman of the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations, which oversees both the Department of State and the Peace Corps. They gave them uh, contracts, an additional $6.4 million provided by the Department of State when John Kerry was secretary there. So we know the State Department tried to bury its intent to transfer these funds to the Peace Corps and its required congressional notification. So it's just more of the same. These are your tax dollars going to enrich these cronies, their families and their friends. What are you going to do when you get on the stage with Donald Trump? Well, the answer is don't get on the stage with Donald Trump. <laughs> Well, now the official mouthpiece of the Democratic Party, the Washington Post, has come out and said that Hillary might not get better from her pneumonia until late October, a month and a half from now, and may have to miss the first debate or debates with Donald Trump. Isn't that convenient? We've said over and over again, there's no way this woman, who in over a year and a half, never gives more than a 15, 20 minute speech, who was never on stage more than 30 minutes, there's no way that she can stand on stage for an hour and a half with Donald Trump. Even during Democrat debates, they have to wait an extra 10 minutes or so for her to come back on stage. And do we believe Secretary Clinton will be coming around the corner any minute? But in the meantime, we want to start with this eye-opening number. And Senator Sanders, this question goes to you first. We had a reporter's a week and a half ago in Ohio where she had to go in a medical tent for 45 minutes with them running in there with stretchers until she could go out on stage and have a five-minute hacking fit and have to cancel her speech. Then she couldn't give a press conference that afternoon. There are hundreds and hundreds of examples of this. But don't worry, her husband, Bill Clinton, last night on Charlie Rose, came out and said that Hillary is working like a demon. Over the last many, many years, the same sort of things happened to her when she just got severely dehydrated. Uh, and she's worked like a demon, as you know, as Secretary of State. and. As a senator, and in the years since, she's. But more importantly, she's on a grueling campaign. Yeah. So there you have it. Bill Clinton's finally telling the truth and agreeing with Julian Assange that Hillary is a demon. I wonder if Hillary will now come out and basically admit that she does want to put the free press's neck in a noose, just like the globalists have already put our economy in a noose. But bottom line, yesterday we talked about tweets put out by the Democrats saying they were meeting at the DNC in D.C. talking about getting a replacement for Hillary. The media said we were conspiracy theorists. But today there were hundreds of publications admitting that indeed that they're looking at a possible replacement for Hillary Clinton. Now I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm simply saying how do you run this unpopular zombie? against Donald Trump when he's rising in the polls and she's falling in the polls, especially after she called half of Trump's supporters deplorable and her own minions said they're all deplorable. You can put half of Trump's supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> right? The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, 
Islamophobic, you name it. Do you think it's tough to re defend the remark deplorables to do the to, to stereotype a group of people or not? Absolutely not. I think that her only mistake is that she said half of his supporters were deplorable. Does anybody around this table, have they not seen Trump's rallies? Have they not seen Trump's own remarks? What she said was not wrong. Her only mistake was that she described half of his supporters that way. Well, that they, the, the, the uh, government should allow Hillary Clinton to become president of the United States. She has disqualified herself as the president of the United States. So look for false flags. Look for staged events. Look for made-up crises. Look for them to play the race card harder than ever in an attempt to divide and conquer this nation. But the truth is, the American people are waking up to the globalist. And the fact that America has its problems, and we're going to fix it as Americans, regardless of what color we are. But we don't need George Soros and offshore banks to come in here and stir things up so they can rob and loot this nation. We're aware of what's happening, and the sleeping giant that is America has risen. The people that are the resistance are awake, and they're ready to take action. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, September 13th, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, Hillary Clinton leaves behind a criminal legacy in the State Department. And it looks like John Kerry is picking up where she left off. As it's been discovered that millions of dollars have been funneled from the State Department to a nonprofit organization run by John Kerry's daughter. Yeah, no conflict of interest there. Then. Who will save the internet? Major technology companies like Facebook, Google, and Twitter want the U.S. government in charge of internet domain. Plus, Bill Clinton says Hillary is A-OK, -okay, and she's working like a demon to get back on the campaign trail. She's worked like a demon, as you know, as Secretary of State and as a senator and in the years since. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Hey, this is Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com, and this is a news blitz. German officials encourage women to wear sneakers to outrun migrant rapists. That's right, you heard that correctly. Women, kick off your high heels and put on some sneakers. Those high heels are turning these guys on. You could get raped, and you need to be able to put on these sneakers so you can run away from them. Because we have people like Angela Merkel who are allowing these tons of people to come in from countries like Syria and all over. But you're the one that has to change the way you live. It says Germany, a country of 80 million people, received over 1 million migrants and unvetted refugees in 2015 alone. Chancellor Angela Merkel is expected to bring in another million migrants this year. Another 91 1,671 migrants enter Germany in January alone. Now, German officials are now encouraging women to wear sneakers to outrun migrant rapists. The past year, more than 1 million immigrants from the third world, almost exclusively younger men, came to Germany, and the country is currently experiencing a historic rape wave. Yeah, we've been calling that for a long time, because guess what? In places like Saudi Arabia, in places like Syria, and Afghanistan, all over, they don't really respect women whatsoever. And now your own leader is bringing them in, allowing them to rape you. Instead of closing off the borders and stopping these people from coming in, no, they want to tell you that you need to take your high heels off. You need to put sneakers on so you can outrun these people. You should change the way you live to make these people feel more accommodated. That is ridiculous. Now let's check out a, another article from the Huffington Mush. My son wears heels. One mom's story of raising a gender nonconforming child. Whatever the hell that means. First of all, the headline alone lets me know that you're a horrible parent. So I'm going to go into this. First of all, you can't pick your sex. Sorry. If you were born a dude, you're a dude. Get over it. Put down the Barbie and go play with some G.I. Joes. Eat a box of Wheaties. Put on some sneakers and go jog. Be an Olympian. Do something. You're not a princess. You can't pick your parents. Guess what? You were born with them. You got them. Deal with it. Move on. Be an adult. Stop blaming your horrible life on your parents. And you can't pick your eye color. You can't pick your race. Rachel Dolezal, who was born white, guess what? You're not black. That's despicable. You are a basket of deplorable. Now let's go into the article. It says, when Julie Tarney's son, Harry, was just two years old, he looked his mother in the eye and said, inside my head, I'm a girl. 
The first thing I ever told my mom was I wanted some chicken. And this guy sitting there talking about he's a girl in his head. This is why you're a bad parent, because you fed into that. You allowed this kid who's already young and confused, hasn't developed, doesn't know how to have a complete thought. And you're allowing this guy to run around in this fantasy land that he's a girl. You're a guy. Go play soccer. Go put on some pads and hit someone and play football. Stop playing with Barbie dolls and stop wearing high heels. This world that we're living in now is completely and totally ridiculous. Now to the next thing, Judge Napolitano. Clinton aide had access to all Hillary's emails without a security clearance. So what's, what they're saying is, is that Hillary Clinton's aide, the guy who actually smashed up all of her cell phones and hammered them, just testified before the House Oversight Committee Tuesday morning and said that he was handling all this classified material without any clearance. When I was in Afghanistan, we had OGA, other government agencies, people in special forces that would have high profiles on them with information that was classified, secret or top secret. They would come to each and every one of us and go, well, before you can sit down in this meeting, do you have a clearance? Can you be here? Can you do that? That's how you have operational security. That's how you maintain the top secret information doesn't get out into the wrong hands under some kid who used to be a thug in Brooklyn. That's why you have to do this. So this is completely and totally crazy, the world we live in. We live in a world where you're told that if you wear high heels, you could be raped, so put on sneakers, that you want to put on high heels and be a, a girl and dance around that's a boy, or we can just give classified information to Clinton aides and say it never happened. Stay tuned for more reports, Infowars.com. I'm Joe Biggs. This is Ashley Beckford reporting for InfoWars.com. I'm here at the University of Texas at Austin to find out if people really even care about the fact that Hillary has actually collapsed this weekend. Do they still think that this is an alt-right conspiracy theory, that Hillary has health problems even after she had to be dragged, basically, into a van this weekend after leaving the 9-11 memorial? Are they still willing to vote for someone who wants to run for president when she can't even walk. Let's find out. Hillary Clinton has been saying for the past few months that it's a conspiracy theory that she has health problems. Do you think that this kind of lends a little bit of credence to those theories? Uh, yeah, I think that the fact that she has to address them at all as conspiracy theories uh, means that she's probably not being quite truthful about everything and there could be some underlying health problems that she's not fully disclosing. Does this video lend any credence, you think, to those points, to those theories? No. I personally don't. You don't? No, I do not. Okay. Uh, I'm, I have class. I mean, back, I'm, I'm old enough to remember um, the, uh, the original Clinton campaign when they talked about the conspiracies of you know, the right-wing media. I never thought there was a conspiracy so much as I thought that their dislike of her was very open. Uh, I have never thought that it was anything other than an attempt to discredit her. It surprised me uh, a great deal that anyone would want to discredit a first lady. Are you concerned that um, these health problems could possibly impede her ability to be the president or that she could die in office? Does that concern you? No. I think she can, she can make it. I mean, it concerns me that we may not know the, the conditions, the full conditions of her health. You know, but that happens in history. In history, uh, John F. Kennedy was elected and we knew nothing about his health and he obviously had some condition that, that made him, um, um, that would have made us wonder if we had known. She falls even more deeply and she has like four people helping her. Does it concern you that she could have serious health problems while running for the presidency? Yes. Um, because, like, we need her, like, now, more than anything. Do you think that it could be a danger to have a presidential candidate who could possibly have serious health issues still running for office? Um, I definitely think that that could come into play into her decision making. Uh, as we saw with some ill presidents like Reagan, uh, it, it impacted their presidency greatly and I think that if she's not in good condition to be just walking around then maybe she isn't in good enough condition to be leading our nation. And it doesn't concern you that she could possibly be ill and running for presidency? Well I mean it, it concerns me that she could possibly be ill because she's a human. 
Okay. But it doesn't concern me as far as her presidency is is in the issue. I mean, honestly, if a president is pretty sick and somehow something happens to him or she, him or her, mm -hmm. um, there's always a pre vice president. Right. Right. Isn't that what we learn in U.S. history class? When the That's president true. can't make it, the vice president president takes over. Right? So I guess we get it, get it used to uh, saying President Kane. I have run eight races, and I have won eight races. I'm undefeated. I'm undefeated. And um, can I just tell you, I'm not going to lose this one. I am not going to lose this one. Wow, I'm actually flabbergasted out here. This is really crazy. I feel like I'm going to collapse like Hillary Clinton did this weekend. It is so intense that I'm out here and every single person I actually spoke to, they all thought Hillary's health problems are no big deal. It's incredible. I don't understand why. It's very, very shocking. It seems like nothing Hillary can do will ever change people's opinions about her. This is just unbelievable. This is Ashley Beckford reporting for Infowars.com. Stay tuned for more special reports. Well, here's a clip of Hillary Clinton literally phoning it in to her favorite news network, CNN, on Monday to discuss that highly publicized medical crisis. I'm feeling so much better, and obviously I should have gotten some rest sooner. I probably would have been better off if I'd just pulled down my schedule on Friday. But uh, like a lot of people, I just thought I could uh, keep going forward and power through it, and obviously that didn't work out so well. I just didn't think it was going to be that big a deal. Uh, you know, I know Chuck said today he didn't tell anybody. It's just the kind of thing that if it happens to you and you're a busy, active person, uh, you keep moving forward. That's right. Hillary Clinton doesn't think disclosing something like pneumonia when she's been dogged by health related conspiracy theories for months. She says, you know, that's no big deal. This is even after the FBI just released those transcripts showing that it was her 2012 concussion that she blamed on all of that recklessness. And in fact, Hillary and her team doubled down on how powerful she was. She just wanted to power through and meet her commitments. She made a determination with her doctor that she would power through this. Yes, she tried to power through it. She decided to power through it. Well, you know, Brooke, she just wanted to power through. She just wanted to power through her schedule. So she wanted to just power through and keep doing it. I As appreciate you know, all senator. of her desire to, to power through. To power through and get things done. She tried to power through it. It was Hillary Clinton's decision, essentially, to power through. The candidate who famously wants to power through these things, she's going to try and power through. We say when you get a call, just power through, power through. They thought she could power through. They thought she could power through it. They thought uh, that she could power through it. Wants to power through things. That too, the, the powering through. Back. Governor uh, Jennifer Granholm said women just power through these things. And I get it. I try to power through all my illnesses. Because Hillary Clinton had a very busy day on Friday and she powered through that day. Yet she powered through. Powering through illness is what women do every day. She continued powering through. Uh, I think about mothers uh, powering through. I mean, she powered through that week. I'm going to power through. That was that was that was her way. And that is, of course, if you believe this whole pneumonia story in the first place. Let's not forget she's had this cough for years, as well as multiple episodes of these fainting episodes. It was a fainting episode that caused her to get that concussion in 2012. So now her team is telling us that it's it's not just the pneumonia, but it's also chronic dehydration. But her staff says she's just too stubborn to drink enough water. Or does she? So they can't even get their story straight on something as simple as how many glasses of water a day does Hillary Clinton drink? This has become Watergate 2.0. Now, let's not forget that Clinton also didn't really think it was that big of a deal that she set up her own private homebrew server, didn't tell the State Department about it. It was most certainly hacked into. And of course, she was reckless with classified information and putting the nation's security at risk. She didn't think it was that big of a deal that she destroyed federal records literally with hammers and bleach bit software. She didn't think it would be that big of a deal to lie and lie again to America and the families of the four Americans who were killed in Benghazi, that she blamed this on a spontaneous reaction to an anti-Islam video made in the US. Hillary Clinton, who was then Secretary of State, told her family members and foreign leaders that the administration knew it was a planned terror attack.
She also didn't think it was that big of a deal to send any military forces to help, leaving the victims under attack for 13 hours. Those who survived were actually rescued by militia who was loyal to the deposed dictator Gaddafi. What difference at this point does it make? Speaking of Gaddafi, she didn't really think it was that big of a deal to take out a world leader and, of course, destabilize the region. We came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> she didn't think it was a big deal to disclose weapons were flowing into the hands of moderate rebels out of Libya. To Turkey? She didn't think selling U.S. uranium to Russia was that big of a deal or other pay-to-play arrangements between the Clinton Foundation and the State Department. She's worked like a demon, as you know, as Secretary of State. Clinton was privy to the contents of the 28 pages for years, but she didn't think it was that big of a deal to have to disclose it. And instead, she just went on ahead collecting millions of dollars from Saudi Arabia, thumbing her nose at the family members of the victims of 9-11. This is what I think. If you're going to get paid $200,000 for a speech, must be a pretty damn good speech. And if it's such a good speech, you got to release the transcripts. Let everybody see it. She also didn't think it was that big of a deal to defend a child rapist, even though she knew that he was guilty or destroying the lives of multiple women who were tied up in sexual trysts with her husband. Here they come again. We're going to have to just ride through this as we have so many of these other um, false accusations. Of course, there's Watergate, Troopergate, Travelgate. Hillary Clinton has been doing this for a very long time. The question is, what is a big enough deal to make Hillary Clinton be honest with America? You talk about leveling with the American people. Have you always told the truth? I've always tried to. Always. Always. Some people are going to call that wiggle room that you just gave yourself. Well, no, always, I'll... always tried to. No, I mean, always... you said, I will never lie to you. You know, you're asking me to say, have I ever? I don't believe I ever have. I, I don't believe I ever have. I don't believe I ever will. I'm going to do the best I can to level with the American people. Now, the fourth hour is picked up by a lot of our affiliates now. It's usually hosted by another one of our great anchors or researchers. A lot of times I co-host it. I'll be 15 or 20 minutes in the next hour because there's this Russia piece that's exclusive to the United States that we've had translated by Daria uh, into English, uh, dealing with their view on the election and threats to Donald Trump. Will he be assassinated? So that's coming up. If your station doesn't carry it, Infowars.com forward slash show. You can find the free audio and video feeds uh, and see this exclusive report we're about to, uh, to premiere from Russia One, state-run media over there. And I'll continue with your calls as well. But I, I should have covered this at the very start of the show. We had Dr. Drew come out a few weeks ago and say, the medicine she's got her on will kill her. And the guy's not even a conservative. This is crazy. I want to talk to Hillary. I want to help her. One of the top board-certifying doctors out there. I mean, he's a doctor's doctor. Boom, fired. Well, will Sanjay Gupta get fired? He said, we still don't know a lot of things about Hillary Clinton, and we need to know. But we've got a prominent Muslim American MD, he was on Newsmax TV, said Hillary didn't pass out from dehydration. And he says the same thing that Dr. Steve Pachinik and others have said, and other medical doctors that are very close to me, I'll leave it at that, that don't want to go on air because this country's in so much trouble. They're, you know, they're scared to, saying, look, it's, it's brain tumor. Um, or it's major heart trouble. Well, the word is it's, it's tumors in her lungs and which affects the heart and in the brain. Uh, but let's go ahead and play this clip of Dr. Uh, Zudia Jasser, with Stephen Mazenberg, uh, here it is. As an internist, I do this every day. And pneumonia is a disease that presents not only with cough, but fevers, chills, and other things. Um, if she was passing, you know, what she had was a syncopal episode. She passed out. That's either cardiovascular or neurologic. Now, her team wants us to believe that this is dehydration. She didn't appear to be dehydrated, and that doesn't get fixed in 90 minutes. Uh, so I can tell you that yeah. it really appears, and I, if I let a patient with syncope leave my office and not get admitted and get evaluated immediately, that would be malpractice. So there's something going on. I mean, even if you look at the reaction of her assistants when she passed out, it almost seemed to appear something they've been familiar with. Nobody was really shocked that she was uh, buckling and her knees were That's buckling. That's what the Secret so Service told us. Chronic Every hour. cerebrovascular accidents, strokes that she's had before that are just exacerbated when she gets ill, or it's some type of uh, neurologic condition, or she had some underlying 
uh, uh, cardiovascular disease, either atrial fibrillation or heart failure that keeps presenting itself. So the reason we are speculating is because just like Dr. Ben Carson said earlier today, she has a disease of dishonesty. And on the anniversary of Benghazi, she un she had a health episode that the American people deserve to know what the reality is. And I think any physician worth their salt knows that people don't pass out from pneumonia, but from other things either. Well, that's right. And, 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 right. and again, it's not pneumonia that she just got. So that's Newsmax.com. I want to get that guy on. Please get that guy on, guys and, and, and ladies. Dutch of the crew. And I've got like four more clips. It's like every day there's just all these doctors coming out. 70 plus percent of one of the biggest surgeon, uh, you know, and, and doctor organization in the country says clearly there's something wrong with her. Folks, the Secret Service said, hey, we got information here from you for you. And I'm standing there with guys in their suits at the RNC. And I'm like, okay. Uh, and my gut was, this is for real. They're all smiling at us and everything. You know the truth. I'm like, well, here's Joe Biggs. Here, Joe, you handle it. Uh, and when I was even scared of the Secret Service, it's just like, you know, you get exhausted getting all these leaks. And I said, here, Joe, you want to handle it? You do it, because Joe was all excited. They contact us. They tell her she's fallen down more than once an hour. We don't know what it is, but they're going to have to make an announcement. I mean, this is getting bad. She is falling apart. And welcome back. I am joined by some very high-ranking members of Team Deplorable, Owen Schroyer and Margaret Howell here. We are going to break down the absolute lunacy of what is now passing for acceptable behavior. And we are not talking about the Twitter trolls themselves. Mm -hmm. We are talking about grown adults Maybe being too, triggered yeah. by memes, cartoons, sidewalk chalk. Socks. Yeah. I mean, it's all very offensive. I'm offended by you because you're a white male, but you know that already. And not so, only is he a white male, he's an effing white male. Yes. Excuse me. He is the <laughs> effing white male. <laughs> Didn't expect this to turn into a bash segment on me. But the truth of the matter is, ladies, they're teaching this in the schools now. I mean, I've got stories here. We've been covering them on Infowars.com. This is one that I found ironic, though. Think about this. At Michigan University, the School of Business requires you to take Identity 101, which will teach students how race, gender, and sexual orientation connect to larger systems of power, privilege, and oppression. They don't talk about how television does that. They don't talk about how the banks do that. They don't talk about how wars do that. They don't talk about how oil companies do that. They don't talk about how schools do that. No, 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 no. It's just about race and mm -hmm. sexual identity. That's yeah. what it's about. Yeah. And the white man and the patriarchy. Those are your enemies. And it, you point out some really good points. Like that is, they don't want you to see what's actually holding you down. That's the whole divide and conquer thing. We can't let people know the truth because then they might actually want to tear down the system and not these oppressive white males that are everywhere. Uh, let's get to this Daily Caller article. Now, Margaret, you brought this in early, and you're just like, we have got to cover this to topic. Cover this. It's so insane. The Daily Caller is saying that uh, both Chris Hayes and Chris Matthews dedicated entire segments of their shows to investigating the meme and what might be some of the dumbest mainstream media journalism you've ever seen. All right. Take a listen. The image of a cartoon frog. There is the green guy there that has become a popular symbol of white nationalists. I didn't know this. I'm learning it. <laughs> wow. Oh, that scary frog. Now, <laughs> Pepe's been around for a much, much longer than Donald Trump, mind you. Look, so liberals have taken to policing memes on Twitter. <laughs> and uh, MSNBC liberals in particular, they uh, have, have taken it upon themselves to losing their minds, deciding that Pepe... This adorable little meme, who's the the heartthrob of internet trolls everywhere, I might add. You know, he he's he's the sim, he's the symbolism of racism, white supremacy. Uh, this was the uh, gold star analysis, if you will, coming out of MSNBC regarding this meme, this internet meme, and uh, supposedly one of Trump's son uh, sons tweeted this, which sparked this massive research committee of what does this mean and the symbolism and apparently it means that you're a white bigot racist right That's because this was obviously much more important than getting to the bottom of hillary's collapse mm -hmm. because it was just pneumonia or you know other things that right. might really concern people Pepe like the frog the pay to play smart. with the clinton foundation right no it's a freaking meme a cartoon a cartoon well this is more of an attempt to just demonize donald trump because <laughs> the, i didn't even know who this frog was until I started seeing it associated with Donald Trump, the conductor of the Trump train. I just thought it was some <laughs> symbol. Honestly, I thought it was some symbol of the Trump campaign. I didn't even know it was Pepe well, the Frog until MSNBC exploded over it. But this is an attack, another attack to try to say Donald Trump is racist. They just spin it in a new direction. It's yeah. their way of saying that the alt-right, they've, they've, you know, 
categorized everyone who doesn't think like they do. They, they've linked them to this white nationalist movement, and they, they look for symbols in that. And apparently, this harmless little frog next to Trump is now a symbol of that white nationalism right. that's also inherently racist, homophobic, bigoted, Islamophobic, Xenophobic, Islamophobic. you name it. Right. Isn't Pepe, though, Pepe would be French, though, right? Pepe would yeah. be a little French. So French. I don't understand. Do if he's know? hanging out with Trump, I mean, Trump must not be a xenophobe. You know, Pepe's from France. Come Predators on. Predators out there, could you please comment in the video below? Please let us know where the heck did Pepe originate he's from. He's a Francophile. I know that he yeah. has been a meme on the internet for quite some time, especially in Reddit, and there, he's constantly popping up everywhere. I've seen him in hip-hop memes. And yes, of course, people do racist things with Pepe. For goodness sakes, they put... Hitler mustaches on their cats. So, of course, there's stupid people out there that are going to do stuff. But moving on, let's let's get back to uh, what's happening in the schools. Now, James O'Keefe came out with a video, uh, an Ivy League student brought to tears by some sidewalk chalk. Once again, it's chalk that is triggering people. Um, I know that they kind of made this where you can't, there's no way you can even put any sidewalk chalk with any political um, leanings on campus because it's upsetting these children. Slash adults children. who are in college. <laughs> We're not talking about Adult Columbia Adult age preschool. children. This is Columbia <laughs> University, not preschool. Not the Columbia preschool that might be four blocks from there. We're not, yeah. these These aren't, you know, they're potty trained by now. Right. And well, they're, over you know, they're censoring <laughs> Halloween costumes at, what was it, Harvard, I think? And, yeah. and, and Yale. So, you know. That's like across the board. <sighs> well, it's on all these major universities. They're teaching tolerance classes. They're teaching white privilege, how to stop white privilege classes. That's a story from the Washington Times. And you have to take these classes. I mean, wh what age am I living in? <laughs> The, the president yeah. is black. The <laughs> most celebrated athletes in our country are black. Uh, rappers, movie stars are I mean, what is the deal? Why, why do people hate me? Because I'm white. What did I do? You're going to have to enroll in the Stop White People Training course. Maybe that's what it is. I need to go you to... You uh, training for your check your white privilege. You know, what, you know what I realized here? The University of Arizona. You know, I grew up, guys. You know, some people grow up wanting to be movie stars. Some people want to grow up and be sports stars or, you know, maybe in the news. But I really want to be the diversity chief for the University of Arizona. I, chief. I just grew up saying, I want to be a diversity chief. Mm -hmm. That's 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 the dream now. Well, you're going to have to identify as something else other than a privileged white male. But you could do that now because it, people have to be tolerant. So you could choose mm -hmm. to transition into something else, identify I as could be Pepe else. LaFrog. You really could. But I think that's obviously still a little bit triggering. Mm. Okay, let's talk about President Barack Obama now. Doubling down, coming up, like rallying around Hillary Clinton after her worst weekend ever. Her campaign is on life support. Clearly, she's very ill. We've been hammering her all week long. He comes to the rescue. He holds a pep rally. And Leanne, this is the best that he can come up with. I really, 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 really want to be electing Hillary Clinton. He sounds like a freaking song on the radio. I yeah. really, 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 I think he's really listening to it on the way <laughs> to the rally. Um, but he's, he's, he's trying to, you know, resuscitate her campaign. He's not doing a very good job of it. And he's like, she's our candidate. Enthusiastically, he was greeted. And the CNN article, it reads like a freaking propaganda piece. Uh, you know, just shocking. Just read it. I know, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like, um, you know, he, he's talking about, you know, just how glowingly he, re he recommends her. It's like, okay, buddy, so you've taken a break from your golfing and your vacays, and now you're holding a pap rally for Hillary Clinton, who's probably mm -hmm. hooked up to an IV and a brainwave monitor in the back somewhere. Yeah. And that you really, Iron lung. Hence really, the mouse really suits. like her. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get the shock therapy to keep her from having any seizures out in public. No, I, I actually tweeted out another thing. I think Peter Dow was the writer, and he was basically commending Hillary on her feet of physical strength. Oh, she yeah. was diagnosed with pneumonia, yet she still was able to hold all these fundraisers in a two-hour event and then go stand in the heat at a 9-11 she is just the epitome of a powerful woman. Like, mm -hmm. my God, she laying also, it on thick. She opened a, a pickle can, too. Let's not forget about the pickle mm -hmm. can, the strength -opened pickle it takes. Jar. But it really is. <laughs> yes, I realize it's a jar. Thank you back there in the studio. But it really is just <laughs> Obama. <a> can. <laughs> but isn't it Obama just totally trying to cover? Hillary can't go out. She can't go on the scene. So they're bringing in Obama. And then what does he say? She's our candidate. Well, we know who you are. You're the corrupt establishment. You're a corrupt politician. You are anti-American. You're a socialist. So you know what? 
Thank you, Obama, for admitting who Hillary is and who she's really for. Thank you. Since when is Obama the Calvary now? It's like, okay, we've called in the Calvary. Well, I thought he was only relegated to, like, life and style pieces at this point. I didn't even right. realize that he had any, you know, political significance. I thought he was just only good for the cover of Vanity Fair. Like, exactly. that's his role. You know, you're stepping back into the other. You're not really relevant. I mean, why would he be the Calvary? It looks like anybody right. else. Why do you want to send, send in the troops there to rally around Hillary mm -hmm. Clinton and especially someone who has... Uh, just about as low, whole, mm -hmm. low poll ratings as she does. So I don't know. Great. That's This is the state of the world we're in. Well, thank you so much, guys. And thank you for tuning into the show tonight. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure and hit the subscribe button. We want to see those numbers rise. And you can also become a subscriber to PrisonPlanet.tv. You can share your username and password with up to 20 people at the same time. And you're supporting this operation. We'll see you here tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central.